if you don't mind, I'd like everyone to take their seat because we're trying to remember we're on real-time broadcast. Well, welcome everyone. We are so pleased to have you join us for our annual State of the College presentation. We do this generally every January to review um, what has been recently going on in the college is of, of importance, as well as share with you some of the plans we have for the, uh, the near future. Tonight, our program will be exactly 60 minutes. Some people, I don't know if we have any LSU or Clemson fans in the audience. <laughs> yeah, afraid there would be. <laughs> But uh, I'm mindful of the fact there's another big football game on tonight. So we, we, we always are competing with something. Uh, but we do have, as usual, a very large online audience. And uh, uh, we are going to cover uh, roughly 50 minutes of presentations to you. And that will leave approximately 10 minutes for you to ask uh, myself and the two deans questions. So there will be somebody that will be coming around. If you wish to ask a question, raise your hand, wait for the microphone to come so that the online audience can hear the question, and then we will answer it. So that's the only rule tonight. So I want to again thank you, and I want to welcome you to this very important presentation that we take as a, a way of communicating to, with all of our supporters, our donors, our board members, our corporation members, our alumni, students, and families who support Bernathan College. We all have one very common bond, and that is the joy of educating young people as they get prepared for their lifelong use. Indeed, it is a very special privilege that we take very seriously and with great humbleness. Over the next 60 minutes, we intend to give you a brief on initiatives, practices, and projects underway at Bernathan College. You will hear from myself, as well as from Dr. Wendy Klosterman, who is the Dean of Academics and Faculty, and she will be followed by Dr. Suzanne Nelson, who is Dean of Students. Tonight's presentations will also focus on the various ways that faculty, staff, and administration carry out our mission and the impact it has on our students. In the audience tonight, I'm not going to be able to name very many of them, but there's many members of the administration. I'm just going to shout a few. Dan Allen's here, who is our CFO. Renee Rosenfeld, who is our director of HR. Uh, Bill LaRousse, who is the director of admissions. I saw David Leach somewhere here, who is our, our athletic director, uh, Carol Trevaney, who is head of our li library, and I know I'm going to screw up and miss a few others. Oh, Robin Cooper right there. He is assistant dean of academic affairs. So if, please hold me harmless if I forgot or didn't call somebody out. But the key thing to remember is that all of us, I mean everyone here, plays a very important role and use in the college. So, uh, we, as I said, we've allocated time, and so we want you to feel, fair, feel free to ask us questions, and I'll make a personal invite to you. If you're not interested in the football game and wish to carry the conversation further, I invite you as my guest to come over to the College Center if you wish to talk further. So, I want to talk about what we really thrive in doing here. And we like to ask the question, what kind of graduates do we produce at Bernathan College after students receive their degrees? In this little picture here, you see the fact that it's always a fun time when our admissions office brings in the raw recruits. Uh, they come in with their boxes and move in uh, a few days before school starts. They're all wide-eyed and nervous and anticipated and joyful and all that, so I'm very happy because they're getting away from home for the first time. And then four to five years later, they graduate. And what really happens during those four to five years? Well, I think myself and my good faculty friends will say, we see a transformation. 
And that is a transformation from a very young or an older teenager to a young adult who is in the process of having started building a rational adult mind. Well, these, these stu students that we have taught here, we hope they will be inspired to lead a good and useful life. We also ask, will they be further inspired to speak, seek a spiritual life founded by the teachings and the heavenly doctrines? These are the type of questions that we regularly ask ourselves with the intent to learn how to become more effective and more helpful with the students we are entrusted to educate. But I might add that our entire group here, whether it's faculty or staff, whether we're raised in the church or not, we all have that common bond that we want to do the best that we can to educate and mentor our students. And these are the types of questions we like to know, so whether we know we've been a, done the job that you expected us today to do. Students today, like generations before them, are looking for a purpose-driven life. We have an obligation to teach them how to succeed with tools that include a formal education, but also from a student life perspective that touches on a multitude of experiences whether on the athletic field, volunteering, performing student work, be getting, becoming involved in social engagements, and many more. We believe that all these forms of experiences can become teachable moments where the formation of the young adult mind can be built with the underpinnings of a sound moral and spiritual values. In a pamphlet that was written by Dr. Greg Baker titled, Is Bernathan College Important to the New Church? Dr. Baker references a quote from TCR 106 and 525, and I'm just going to paraphrase here very quickly. And a quote, the quote is, where the later years of teenage growth turns to the formation of a responsible, rational mind. Yes, the virtues, the virtues of a sound, responsible, rational mind is what we hope all our children will eventually acquire. As a parent, a grandparent, or a relative, we live for the day when our children are ready to take on the full responsibilities of adulthood. At Bernathan College, we hope to take a key role in developing a young person's adult, rational mind which starts with their academic training. And with these thoughts in mind, I would now like to introduce Dr. Wendy Klosterman, Dean of Academics and Faculty, who will speak on how we serve our mission and deliver academics at Bernathan College. Dr. Klosterman. Thank you all for coming here tonight. Although it's usual to hear about what is new at an address like this, because of the nature of our question, how are we supporting our new church mission, much of what I'm going to discuss tonight is not particularly new, but is part of our regular practices and activities. However, perhaps because it has been steady work, it may be under-discussed. And so I'm excited to be looking together with you tonight at various ways that our new church mission infills our work at Bernathan College. And for those of you who specifically came to hear about what is new, don't worry. I will conclude with comments on two initiatives that um, are intended to strengthen our support of our mission. I'd like to consider our mission statement through the lens of that fundamental triad of purpose, means, and result, or end, cause, and effect that Swedenborg so often discusses. As Divine Love and Wisdom 167 explains, there are three ends which follow in sequence. They're called the first end, the immediate end, and the final end, and they're also called the purpose, the means, and the result, or end, cause, and effect. And these three must all be present in anything in order for it to be something. 
So let's keep these three ends, purpose, means, and result, in mind as we look at Bernathan College's mission statement. It begins, Bernathan College of the New Church serves as an intellectual center for all who desire to engage in higher education enriched, guided, and structured by the study of the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the theological writings of Emanuel Swedenborg. I suggest that this sentence articulates the immediate end, that is the means or the cause of what we're trying to do at Bernathan College. If this positioning does not seem immediately obvious, please bear with me for now. In a few minutes, we'll return to this sentence and consider our efforts in relation to it in some detail. The mission statement continues. This education challenges students to develop spiritual purpose, to think broadly and critically from a variety of perspectives, and to build intellectual and practical skills. Here we have an articulation of what we are striving for as the final end, that is the result or the effect of a Bernathan College education. The mission statement concludes with the first end, that is the purpose of a Bernathan College education. It reads, the ultimate purpose is to enhance students' civil, moral, and spiritual lives and to contribute to human spiritual welfare. This statement of purpose is anchored in numerous teachings for the new church, and I'll offer here just a few examples. Heaven and Hell 529. If we look critically at human life with rational insight, it turns out to be threefold. Spiritual life, moral life, and civic or civil life. These three lives are distinguishable. Some people live a civic life, but not a moral or spiritual one. Some live a moral life, but not a spiritual one. And some live a civic and moral life and a spiritual life as well. And these last are the ones who are leading heaven's life. And so we work to invite our students into all three aspects of life, civil, moral, and spiritual. True Christianity 444 reads, when our moral life is also spiritual, it is a life of goodwill or charity because practices involved in a moral life and in a life of goodwill are the same. Goodwill is wishing our neighbors well and therefore treating them well. So fostering goodwill or charity and love for the neighbor are integral to our purpose. Many other passages, such as the one here, discuss the close relationship between love to the neighbor and love to the Lord and the place of usefulness in it. And so what is the purpose of a Bernathan College education, whether in academic, spiritual life, or student life programming? We seek to prepare students to be thoughtful, engaged, and useful members of their communities, whether through their careers, volunteerism, family life, or other means. But we do not seek this only. We simultaneously seek to help students to develop their characters, to live moral lives, and even more, moral lives filled with a spiritual outlook, with the goal of inspiring students to lead lives of goodwill, rooted in love toward their neighbors and the Lord, to find spiritual purpose. And so with this in mind, let's turn to the means or the cause, that is the how of this education. We'll return to that first sentence. It's higher education, enriched, guided, and structured by the study of the Old Testament, the New Testament, and theological writings of Emanuel Swedenborg. This is a critical component of our mission. It's what distinguishes Bernathan College as an institution of higher education. Ideas from the word and the theological writings of Swedenborg shape and give form to the purpose of the institution. And an education informed by engagement with these ideas is the means that we use to try to accomplish our results. So how does this appear in the academic area specifically? 
teachings from the Old Testament, New Testament, and writings, enrich guide and structure programs and courses in numerous ways and with ongoing variety as each faculty member pursues this for herself or himself and works with the always changing needs of each new generation of students. Tonight, I will offer six types of examples from our undergraduate education to illustrate. First is the religion residency requirement. Our undergraduates are not only required to take a particular number of religion classes, but they're required to take religion classes every year in order to sure, ensure that our students engage regularly with courses that are focused on religion throughout their college career. This residency requirement is in addition to the required weekly chapel. Second, Bernathan College's core or general education program includes specific spiritual, moral, and civil course requirements responding to the statement and the purpose of mis the, the mission statement of purpose. The spiritual requirements consist of religion courses and overlap with the religion residency requirements. Courses from various disciplines can be approved to meet the moral and civil requirements. So, criteria for courses fulfilling the moral requirements state in part that courses in this area aim to foster personal ethics and encourage responsibility for the well-being of others. Students focus their studies on moral concepts within the context of a particular discipline, considering the teachings of the writings, and relating morality to the spiritual and civil levels of life. Current approved courses are in the fields of business, education, philosophy, and psychology. Criteria for courses fulfilling the civil category state in part that study in this area prepares students for civic engagement while making them aware of local, national, and international contexts. The courses include what the writings have to say about civil matters and present a new church outlook on this aspect of life. Courses approved in, the, in this area are in the, the disciplines of philosophy and political science. Third, the first law of divine providence, that we should act in freedom in accordance with reason, is central to the organization of our curriculum. A statement describing how the concepts of freedom, reason, and action from the first law of divine providence underpin our curriculum is handed out and presented to all new students during orientation. It's also made available to parents at new student registration sessions and is discussed by faculty during new faculty orientation. Fourth type of example. Our students consider intersections between their major field of study and new church teachings as part of their major programs. For example, many of our students conduct studies of new church doctrines that relate to and dialogue with the specific focus of their capstone research. Fifth example, faculty members bring new church teachings into individual courses from all disciplines. This occurs in a variety of ways that ranges from serving as a foundation for a professor's pedagogical approach to material discussed in the classroom or used in assignments. To give a few examples of the latter, students might consider the relationship between substance and form when studying art, immediate and genuine good when studying business, the history of churches or divine human relationships while studying history, the innocence and developmental states of children while studying education. Correspondences, that is how spiritual substance underlies and gives reality to natural matter while studying literature or science. The nature of the mind and of healthy and unhealthy relationships while studying psychology. Providence and chance while studying mathematics. And the relationship of wisdom to love and useful service while studying philosophy and more instances could be named here. Lastly, the sixth example is faculty development. How, we support, how do we support faculty to engage in this kind of work? And it happens in several ways. In order to be eligible for promotion, 
Faculty must complete a study examining the intersection between their discipline and new church teachings. Faculty also share with each other about how they integrate new church teachings into their courses. In the last two years of the faculty retreat, presentations have focused on new church teachings in art, business, education, literature and writing, science, religion, and the library. We're grateful for the generous support of the New Church Faculty Summer Study Fund, which supports Bernathan College faculty, as well as Academy of the New Church Secondary School faculty and General Church School faculty, in reading the writings for the purpose of being able to teach from a New Church perspective. We have also recently deeply discounted our Masters of Arts in Religious Studies courses and our auditing rates for our own employees in order to better enable them to take courses, particularly those related to New Church uh, doctrine for professional development. And lastly, faculty can engage in New Church re uh, research often supported by the E. Bruce Glenn Research Fund, the Carpenter Fund, and the Carpenter Scholars Fund, and we're very grateful for those opportunities. So now that we have considered the purpose and the means of a Bernathan College education, at least as it applies to academic life, let's turn to the statement about the desired effect, the result of a Bernathan College education. This education challenges students to develop spiritual purpose, to think broadly and critically from a variety of perspectives, and to build intellectual and practical skills. And for this evening, I'd like to consider just the first part of the desired effect, challenging students to develop spiritual purpose. Students report very high levels of satisfaction in Religion 101, the first New Church Theology course most students take at Bernathan College. The percent of Religion 101 students who agreed or strongly agreed with the statement, overall I was very satisfied with this course, was 91.5% in 2017-18, 88% in 2018-19, and so far this year, also 88%. And it's worth noting that this level of satisfaction is higher than the overall averages for the curriculum as a whole, which ranged from 79.6% to 83.7% for the same period. The Religion 101 satisfaction measure is an indicator that we are successful in meaningfully engaging our students with New Church teachings as they begin their studies at Bernathan College. As students continue their studies, they encounter exp academic experiences in which faculty use New Church teachings in dialogue with their disciplines specifically to help students develop spiritual purpose. And here are 10 examples that illustrate the variety, and don't worry, they're short. 10, 10 for variety, but short examples. The Reverend Dr. Ray Silverman uses his Rise Above It program to teach students about the inner meaning of the Ten Commandments and engage students in reflecting on how they're applying it to their lives. The Reverend Dr. Thane Glenn asks his students in his course on New Church Religious Practices to develop a plan and material for either a scripture study guide or a small group uh, spiritual growth guide. Reverend Grant Schnarr involves his Religion 101 students in an assignment that asks them to think about themselves and their futures in relation to the teachings of how we're created to be vessels of divine love and how repentance and growth are necessary. And it isn't just in religion classes. Dr. Kelly Ballard similarly emphasizes the importance of working to remove the obstacles that prevent us from being conduits of divine love so that do, through doing this personal spiritual work, teachers can better meet the needs of their students. Dr. Kurt Fry has his students examine new church teachings about spiritual growth when they consider various psychological frameworks relevant to spiritual growth. Dr. Kristen King asks students to reflect on ideas from the writings in the context of the literature they are studying, inviting students to allow that process to open them up for new ideas and insights about themselves. In a medals course assignment, 
Dr. Jonathan Klein encourages students to identify a text of personal spiritual significance and to produce a piece of art that they can use to remind them of that passage. With her probability students, Professor K. Ira Bongers discusses determinism versus probabilism and how divine providence directs us to act with prudence, but also asks us to acknowledge that we can't ever truly know what will happen. Dr. Frederick Brintison discusses with his students how a study of diseases can be used to understand spiritual concepts. For example, how the biological mechanisms in diseases can help us understand the spiritual principles of how evil works. Dr. Dan Sinisfet and Dr. Marcy Latta have philosophy students explore various worldviews and discuss them in relationship to New Church teachings to help our students better understand their options for their own life purpose. And again, there are more examples that I could give. So finally, I'd like to look at one more set of data that Bernathan College regularly collects. We regularly look at how our students feel about their development of spiritual purpose. Every year since 2010-11, we've asked students in a survey about the contribution the college has made to their spiritual growth. In particular, we measure what percent of respondents report that the college has made, quote, a great or, quote, very great contribution to their spiritual growth. Our results have fallen somewhere between three-fifths and four-fifths of respondents agreeing. Now, truth be told, this number has moved up and down within this range over the years. And we'd like to see improvement in our results. But I want to emphasize two points about this data tonight. First. Our data show that since we began collecting this information nine years ago, every year a majority of respondents, between three-fifths and four-fifths, have responded that the college made a great or very great contribution to their spiritual growth. And the language here is not a low bar. It's not some contribution. It's great or very great. The survey results indicate that every year we're succeeding more often than not. Second, the percent of graduating students in particular who report that the college made a great or very great contribution to their spiritual growth in most years has been higher than the percent of all respondents who agreed in that year. In other words, the cohort of graduating students is often more positive with regard to the college's contribution to their spiritual growth. It seems that the more time students spend at Bernathan College, or perhaps the more mature students are, the more likely they are to feel that the college has contributed greatly or very greatly to their spiritual growth. This is a measure that we take seriously and it's one we would like to strengthen. And so I'd like to conclude my portion of the State of the College Address by sharing two initiatives that we hope will strengthen in different ways how we support our mission. This academic year, Bernathan College is the recipient of a professional development grant of about $9,600 from an organization called the Network for Vocation in Undergraduate Education, or NetView, affiliated with the Council of Independent Colleges and supported by the Lilly Endowment. The meaning of the word vocation here is important. The, word, the meaning of the word in this contents context is one sense of calling. And for many schools, it's particularly one sense of divine leading. NetView supports colleges in working with their own particular theological frame to develop programming that helps students to explore how they may be called to live their lives. Such programming helps students to, on the one hand, reflect about who they are, and what they may want to do with their lives, including their choice of major and career. And on the other hand, listen for what the world needs and who the Lord may be inviting them to become. A combination of self-reflection and outward orientation toward the neighbor and the Lord. 
This grant is supporting activities to help our faculty and staff across many areas of the institution. It's truly a collaboration between academics and student life to work together to develop a shared philosophy of vocation rooted in our new church mission, to learn about best practices and vocation programming, and to gather together our current work into a coherent and named program that includes both curricular and extracurricular activities. I'm excited by the cross-campus collaboration involved, the Mission Center dialogue it sparked, and the opportunity to communicate even more clearly and coherently the benefit of a Bernathan College education, helping students to develop spiritual purpose as they engage in preparation for their futures. And the second initiative that I want to talk about is the Institute for Swedenborg Studies. I reported last year on the formation of this institute, which is under the direction of the Reverend Dr. Thane Glenn. And this evening, I'd like to update you on four areas of work that are underway this year. First, the Master of Arts in Religious Studies is now housed in the Institute. And Thane has been working on revising this program as in the process of developing possible certificates comprised of constellations of courses in this program. Two, thanks to the generous support of donors, Thane Glenn has worked with Grant Schnarr to develop a pilot non-credit online course on the life after death, which is due to launch in March, so stay tuned. And the third, through the Institute's partnership with the Swedenborg Foundation and Off the Left Eye, Bernathan College faculty will be providing programming about Swedenborgian theology applied to different academic subjects for the Off the Left Eye conference that will take place in June on Bernathan College's campus. And lastly, work is underway on an academic seminar about Swedenborg and spirituality involving participation from, from people from a variety of institutions. And the aim is to hold this seminar sometime in the next few years. So you'll hear about it a little later. Having said, spoken for a while now on uh, mission and academic life, I'd like to introduce Dr. Suzanne Nelson, our Dean of Students, who'll speak about how student life is working to support the mission. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I'm honored to be presenting to you on behalf of the Student Life team. In Student Life, our goal is to provide opportunities for students outside of the classroom to connect with their inner selves in order to enhance physical health and psychological well-being, develop leadership skills, and participate in charitable community-based experiences. Guided by new church principles, we encourage students to fully engage in campus life so that they may acquire skills and knowledge that will give them a solid framework to work within as they address issues of values, ethics, and morality. We are sowing the seeds for the lifelong spiritual growth and development with the goal of having each student formulate how they will lead a useful life where they think for themselves and live for others. Tonight, I will discuss four key areas in student life and how they support the mission of a new church education. The area of health and wellness, student activities and multicultural programming, athletics, and residence life. Because the ultimate purpose of the mission is to enhance student civil, moral, and spiritual lives, the Health and Wellness Center provides services that empower students to perform at their best mentally and physically. One must learn to take care of and work on their own health before they can truly help to support another individual's welfare. 
Health and Wellness Services, under the direction of Scott Jones, has continued to support student success and retention through consistent medical care and mental health support services. The new space in the College Center allows us to provide students with individual appointments and small group meetings that focus on wellness, spirituality, mindfulness, and meditation. The students rate the medical services highly on surveys with a score of 4.7 out of 5. Students also state that they would highly recommend our medical services to their peers. Throughout the week, the general medical staff sees students 12 hours a week spread out over four service days. Counseling services are offered 20 hours per week over five days. We continue to use the after hours on-call services in Montgomery County of access for mental health issues. It's been highly effective for supporting students who find themselves in crisis. This past year, we have seen a 60% increase in the use of counseling services. And this uptick is consistent with what's being seen at other institutions across the country. At Bernathan College, we continue to provide educational initiatives for staff and students on health-related issues, such as anxiety, depression, and suicidal ideation. At a time when other colleges and universities are challenged to meet the demand for counseling, many of those institutions have a two-week or more wait time for appointments. I'm proud to say that Bernathan College is able to provide same-day service to address concerns. In fact, this year, our director has been asked to speak at the American College Health Association Conference about the model that we're using to manage students' health care requirements here at the college. The College Center provides a platform for students to create a caring community, explore the connections between faith and real-world complexities, make a difference in the lives of others through service work, and grow in a sense of their own abilities and self-awareness. As we read in the teachings from the heavenly doctrines, there cannot be true unity without the presence of harmonious variety. Arcana Celestia 457 states, quote, all unity is formed out of harmony among many. The way that the many harmonize determines what kind of unity they have. No monolithic unity lasts, only the unity created by harmony." Unquote. Thus, harmony is a key component of a new church education. Under the direction of Jonathan Carr, student activities and affiliated student organizations, including Student Government Association, CARE, Multicultural Student Organization and Feel Good have sponsored both smaller and larger scale events over the past year. The smaller events were focused on bolstering the sense of community that is so vital and integral to Bernathan College. There was a grand total of 38 sponsored events, which included activities such as autumn ball dance, blacklight volleyball, Red Cross blood drive, the Feel Good grill off, and intramurals. An example of a new larger scale event at, was happened at orientation in August. Here we focused on impacting the local community by having students work on various projects at Karenwood Village, Bernathan Thrift Shop, and Amberlin Farm. The afternoon of service ended with a cookie social at Karenwood Village. We are looking forward to expanding the event next year to include additional local service opportunities that teach our students the value of helping others in need. Student Life was honored this year to have three students speak at the Charter Day Banquet on the topic of student engagement. Rob Breitner talked about his experiences as a student RA and the importance of community in residence life. As SGA President Francine Gomez Almonte 
discussed leadership and this year's theme for SGA of giving back. And Hannah DeWeese talked candidly about lessons learned outside the classroom as a student athlete. Last year, we celebrated Diversity Week with a number of events hosted by the Multicultural Student Organization. These included activities like Noche de Fiesta and Coffee Doesn't Care, aimed at providing worldly educational culinary experiences for the Bernathan College community. To celebrate the diversity of church membership across the world, photographs and highlights of different societies were posted on media screens throughout the college. We have expanded the offerings for this year, which is actually coming up next week, as you see on the slide. Student activities will continue to build on a successful past year by continuing to empower students to examine the interaction of faith, community, and social responsibility as a basis for finding and affirming meaning and satisfaction in life. Under the leadership of our new athletic director, David Leach, athletics continues to actively contribute to the institution's mission through a program that fosters commitment, sportsmanship, and charity. In conjunction with the chaplains, the athletic department hosts the beautiful tradition of holding a commissioning service at the beginning of each season, fall, winter, and spring sports that happens in the Bernathan Cathedral. The service is an opportunity for student athletes to receive a blessing and a commission to compete passionately and act with respect, integrity, and perseverance. Each team also has a volunteer spiritual mentor, a member of the community, faculty, or clergy that works with the student athletes in an advisory capacity during their sports season. During the past year, 13 varsity sports competed in the Colonial States Athletic Conference, or CSAC, and ice hockey competed as an independent sport. In the spring, the conference decided to terminate the sponsorship of men's tennis. So as a result, the college has discontinued this sport. But currently, we have the following sports. Men's and women's cross country, men's and women's soccer, men's and women's basketball, men's and women's lacrosse, men's ice hockey, men's golf, women's field hockey, women's volleyball, and women's tennis. With the second year of the community engagement model under the direction of Michael Austin, Residence Life strives to create a residential learning experience that supports the students and the mission of the college by creating a sense of community with an emphasis on charity and love towards the neighbor. The first year halls have grown by 15% since fall of 2017. Goodnow and Cooper halls have 80% capacity for the first time since opening. Total occupancy for all of the currently opened residence halls is at 65%. This increase is due to the hard work of the residence life staff, in addition to reopening Child's Hall with large single rooms, with similar future plans for Grant Hall increased events that have been offered to our students, and communication to incoming students about the benefits of living on campus. Residence Life staff continues to engage students in small programs, fostering stronger relationships with our campus partners and enhancing the experience outside the classroom. In this past year, they offered 90 different programs to our students. Two projects that continue to evolve from last year are increasing faculty-student interaction in the residence halls with the Faculty Passion Series, where faculty members share their experience about a topic of personal interest. And in partnership with Spiritual Life, we are able to host small groups in the Grant Hall Spiritual Life Space for quiet meditation and reflection. With all of these initiatives, in the residence halls, we asked ourselves, are our efforts working? And based on our surveys, students' overall satisfaction with residence life was rated four out of five. Residents scored resident assistance as an average of 4.3 
for their efforts to get to know them. We're excited to see such a positive response about our resident hall experience and will continue to expand our assessment efforts to determine how best to improve and provide a community-based experience in keeping with new church values. As shown on the second floor of the College Center, student life continues to strive to inspire students to live the mission through core values of wisdom, kindness, commitment, integrity, growth, honesty, courage, curiosity, and service. Thank you. I'd like to wrap up our presentation this evening before we take questions about what, what's the glue that keeps all of this together, and that's spiritual life. And then I'd like to comment a little bit on how we are moving forward as we hope to see the college grow in the next coming years. Spiritual life is really, you've heard it mentioned throughout the presentations tonight. And we're very blessed to have a clergy faculty that really, really cares about the young people that we educate. And we are led by our chaplains, which is Reverend Grant Schnarr and Reverend Coleman Glenn. Or back, I see Coleman there, and where's Grant? There you are, Grant. Okay, you're hiding in the back. Um, these gentlemen put in countless numbers of hours to get to know our students, to get them involved. And probably the most challenging task, to make chap chapel something that they want to attend. And so we have a few laughs about that, but we also take it very seriously. But this is a, every generation changes. Every uh, generation has different interests. And Grant and uh, Coleman have done an enormous amount of work to make chapel something that students actually want to go to, and we're very pleased with that. But it isn't just those two men that work with our community. We also have six, or excuse me, five other full-time uh, faculty members who teach religion, you see their names there, you know them well. And in addition, in our theological school, Andy Dibb and Grant Odner also help us from time to time with teaching courses in the undergraduate or regular college. So we, inter we don't separate, we work and interact, and it's, it's just it's a great experience for all involved. We also asked, and we asked the question, are we serving the spiritual needs of our students? And we believe that we are, but we can always do better. And we include in today's life, uh, spiritual life, we have chapel on Mondays for small groups if they want to attend. Wednesday we have traditional chapel, as we call it, with traditional new church hymns and songs and, and a talk. We also in the evening have what we call a Vesper service. And on Fridays we have a re partnership with New Church Live where Chuck Blair comes over here and we talk about more contemporary topics that students have a great interest in. We also, as Dr. Nelson mentioned, we have spiritual spaces in the residence halls. We hope to add to the dining hall a place where students may say a prayer or grace before they partake of their meals. We uh, like to outline special events. Uh, one of the ones, I just say a small statistic, but Every year we have Charter Day, and Dr. Nelson talked about the banquet, but we also uh, have a procession and a service there. And I might mention these, our students are adults. We don't force them to go to things. We encourage them. But they, on their own, the vast majority of students look forward to the Charter Day procession and uh, service. And in fact, we're worried that in another year or two, we won't have enough seats for all the students. So that's a happy problem we're going to have to deal with. Um, we also look forward to outdoor services and other kinds of community programming with our new college center and so forth. We want to do more. Suzanne already mentioned our, our, special, our athletic programs, but I'd also like to mention how we reach and show love and care to those less fortunate. 
our student uh, athletes did this, uh, I don't know if you haven't seen the video, did a spe uh, do special work with the Special Olympics. They turn out and devote their own time. Uh, we recently in December had an event that was held down at the Bernathan uh, Elementary School, you know, a purpose building where they had uh, special events for those kinds of, of individuals and it was uh, very, very popular. We also do other service trips, and we do things with the New Church Live group who go down and do feed the homeless, for example. I talked to a couple students that recently attended that. And uh, one per young man who grew up in the Detroit society said it was the most moving thing he ever did in his life. He said he couldn't believe that when they went down there to serve the food that they offered, there were people lined up for three or four hours just to get a meal. And that had a profound impact in how he could make a difference. So there's just so many areas that spiritual life has an impact, and we've talked about them tonight. But at the end of the day, it's how do you build relationships? And how do you show up when a student is in crisis? We have throughout the school year unexpected de family deaths of students. We have health issues. We have social issues. And I want to thank our chaplains as well as our rest of our clergy who don't not hesitate to help a student in need. Going forward for our missions and retention, we've talked about that. And this, we haven't really talked about business, and I'm not, except to say we were pleased with, we had a, a very poor year two years ago with recruiting that set us back a bit. But last year we bounced back by uh, increasing our uh, recruiting cl incoming class by 28 students over la the previous year. In addition to that, we added 10 new graduate students for the first cohort of our master's in education. And we had the highest retention rate of that first year cohort with 84%. And we know we can build on that. Going into this next year's pipeline, it's very healthy, I'm pleased to report. It's way too early to make predictions because um, there are a lot of uh, variables that come into play, but our pipeline is very strong. We've been fortunate to receive a major gift from, uh, to help us bolster the staff and resources in the recruiting department. We recently brought on the start of this year, Bill LaRousse, who's in the audience tonight, who came to us as formerly was head of admissions for Ryder University over in Princeton. He's had a wonderful positive impact with his years of experience and is helping us reshape and retool our admissions department. In addition to that, we have a, uh, from the gift that we received, we have hired some more people in admissions office and we're seeing the impact of that. But we've also retained a top class marketing agency that is in the process of helping us reformulate our brand and the marketing efforts that this school makes. We had several consultants in, in the last year and they were all consistent in what they recommended. And they said, double down on the fact that you're a faith-based school. There is a very good, solid demand for those kinds of, uh, that type of an education. And so you'll be hearing more about our work with a comp the company that we're working with who has had great success with other faith-based schools and helping them to promote their brand, their mission, and their purpose. So with that, we're going to now start our question and answer period. Uh, we're going to be sitting here. If there's viewers that are at home or watching online, I have my phone here, and you can text us any question you want. We'll try to get them in. Uh, the, you see the phone number on the, on the uh, screen. If we go longer than the uh, 8.30 hour, we'll keep going for a bit, but I don't, I don't expect anyone to stay past that. And uh, we will, if there's any interest, we'll carry on to the uh, College Center. So, ladies. Okay. Is this on? Yes, it's on. It works. So we want to thank all of you that turned out tonight as, as one of the larger groups because normally when we do these kinds of presentations, including our speaker series, roughly several hundred stay at home and watch. And so 
Uh, we appreciate you who made the effort to come out in person tonight because it's much appreciated because we do like to see real faces in front of us. So are there any questions? We have one here. Um, I think it was called NetView. Was it was you talking about that? Yes. Um, I saw it talking about both faculty and staff, and I also talked, saw words about undergraduate students. So I'm, not, I'm just not clear about what that's focusing on. So the grant that we received this year is a professional development grant that faculty and staff are engaging in to develop programming for our undergraduate students. Okay. Does that yes. clarify? Yes. Thank you. I haven't received a text. So. Any other questions? Susie. Um, having had two grandchildren that attended the college but lived at home, I know one of the, the issues is um, something I guess Suzanne deals with, which is a kind of a, a, a hanging out um, issue, a place for the kids to, to just have a sense of social life. Is, is the new social center developing into a place that students can come and have a place to be together in the evenings and feel like uh, fellow students at Bernathan College? Yes, it's been phenomenal. Um, it, it's been wonderful to see the students it, just from the very beginning embrace the whole idea. That first night when we opened, they were so excited and just you know running around the building it it, it was contagious um, the gaming room is popular just hanging out and studying is popular we see a lot of students um, you know studying together students who may not have known each other getting together to do different projects and um, you know interacting with the student life staff that's there the fitness center has been very well used. So uh, across the board, we couldn't be more pleased. And it, it's just great when students are coming on to campus um, from the admissions department to have that as part of our tour. Um, students, potential students, get really excited about that space. It really does. Thank you for asking. Another question here. What are the hours for the student center? For the students or for the general population? They keep, they keep changing. John, do you want to give the update? <laughs> this is our building manager, Jonathan Carr. We've been clarifying this and changing the hours, and I can't keep up. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> so um, during the week, Monday through Friday, the hours are 7.30 through 12 for students, 12 midnight. Um, and then on the weekends, it's 9 a.m. through, um, sorry, 9 a.m. through 6, sorry about that. And then on Sunday, we also have 9 a.m. through, sorry, 12 through, uh, 12 through 6 as well. And the reason why some of these hours are a little bit wonky is because they are, there's a mix of factors that go into it. Um, for the students, we have the fitness center as well as the Lions Cafe. So because we moved over um, dining services over there, students are eating over the college center on the weekends. So they study over there, they eat over there, they spend time over there. So it's really been a good opportunity for them. Um, for the general population, uh, the cafe hours, uh, Monday through Friday, are 12 to 1.30 and then 4 to 10 p.m. And then uh, Saturday and Sunday, it is 1 through 5 p.m. for both days. All right? He did better than I would have. <laughs> I rely on my millennial staff. <laughs> Thanks, John. I can't remember which one of you spoke about a program, an initiative, or something with off the left eye 
Uh, was that about the Swedenborg Institute? I just am interested to hear more about that. So the Swedenborg, the Institute for Swedenborg Studies, um, it partners with the Swedenborg Foundation and Off the Left Eye, also partners with New Christian Bible Study. And so one of the manifestations of the partnership with the Swedenborg Foundation and Off the Left Eye is um, our participation in a conference uh, that Off the Left Eye is putting on in June on Bernathan College's campus. Um, uh, Curtis Childs from Off the Left Eye is part of the uh, participates in the steering committee, and Steve David from New Christian Bible Study participates in the steering committee for the Institute for Swedenborg Studies. Um, so when we're in talks about other ways that um, this it can be a good uh, synergistic relationship between all these different efforts, certainly um, there is a large audience for both of people who are interested in Swedenborg and the writings and may be interested in things that Bernathan College has to offer as well. And so um, it's a it's a very uh, nice relationship. When is the conference? It's in early first June, first week of June. First week. Uh, first week. Chandra knows. June 5th through the 7th. And you can buy, register through the Left Eye's website or Facebook page. So prior to the General Church retreat, OK. Right. So we're expecting right now over 200 new faces here. Be fun. Question, Susie Layla. This isn't a question. It's more a statement. On February 9th, Th Doc Reverend Dr. Thane Glenn is coming to speak at the Swedenborg Library on the Swedenborg Institute, and we'd like everybody to come and hear him speak on it. Uh, the, it, it starts at 4 with a short reception beforehand, so come and hear all about it. Thank you, Susie. I'm really glad you included that. Well, it's getting close to football hour. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you all for coming out tonight. I hope you, we wanted to place particular emphasis uh, for those who know, may not know how committed we are to our mission and how that is important to the college. And we wanted to particularly emphasize that tonight. So thank you all for coming and we look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you.